Human milk is nothing short of miraculous. Fortunately, here at UC San Diego Health, top scientific minds are invested in learning more about its secrets. Dr. Lards Bode is a professor of pediatrics, endowed chair of collaborative human milk research, and director of the Human Milk Institute. He joins us today to share what he's learned about human milk. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So tell us, what is human milk? Well, I think for most people, they would say that's baby's first food. But you said it in the introduction, it's really miraculous. It's so much more than just food. It is really almost medicine for the baby for the first six months of life. Uh, it contains so many bioactive molecules that do more than just let the baby grow, but really protects it from infections uh, and, and really provides that health for life, really, for the entire life. How did you get into studying the science behind human milk? It's a long story, so I can <laughs> give you the short version or the long version. The long version is that uh, I got into this in high school through sports and uh, being an athlete and wanting to improve my own nutrition. So nothing, uh, nothing with human milk at that point. I uh, started studying nutrition and had a biochemistry professor who really spurred my interest in biochemistry of nutrition. Hmm. And then out of all places did an internship at a formula company in Germany. Interesting. And uh, there I got to learn more about infant formula, but of course the you know template of infant formula, human milk, and how little we really know about human milk and how far away we are making infant formula like human milk, although that's always a tagline, right? We're getting closer to human milk. We'll never get closer to human milk. We'll always be different. And that really got my interest. And um, then I started to get my PhD in nutrition specifically on human milk bioactives and somehow ended up over here in La Jolla at UCSD and started a whole Human Milk Institute, which is really the first one in the world. Uh, crazy enough, but that here we are. That's terrific. You've touched on it a little bit, but what are some of the properties of human milk that make it so unique and, and still so different from formula? Yeah. So human milk is not just a list of ingredients uh, where you have you know, your proteins and your lipids and your you know, carbohydrates, and then you see the calorie content, like the nutrition label that you have on your food that you get from the supermarket. That's in there too. But in addition to that, it's really a life tissue. We have human cells, immune cells, epithelial cells, some say stem cells in human milk. We have antibodies that are really uh, coming from maternal immunity and sensing what kind of pathogens, what kind of bacteria and viruses are around uh, mom's environment. And then mom responds to that, makes specific antibodies against those uh, bacterial viruses, and then delivers them to the baby with the milk because infant's uh, immune system isn't fully mature to respond to those uh, pathogens. So it really contains context-specific molecules, and human milk changes uh, over the course of lactation quite a bit. Uh, so it's not static, it's not the same composition all the time. It changes in response to the environment, in response to the age of the baby, and uh, does all the miraculous uh, things. It's incredible to, to hear about it. What would you say are some of the greatest misconceptions about human milk that people have? I think the biggest misconception we touched on already is really that we think it's just food for the baby. That's the bare minimum. I mean, we need to have food for the baby, uh, but it is so much more than that. Uh, it provides health benefits for the baby in the immediate time when the baby is breastfed, but also lifelong benefits. Mm -hmm. And not only for the baby, and I think that's something that we also fully underestimate is that there is benefits for mom. We know that women who breastfeed are less likely to develop breast and ovarian cancer, mm -hmm. uh, have a lower risk for cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. and many other diseases. And, and this is a lot of stuff that's still in, in the making in research and, and discovery. So that's, of course, very difficult to mimic. Benefit for mom if you put a product on the market that's just for the baby. Mm -hmm. So there's an entire component of this entire triad between mother, milk, and infant that's missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not to mention, you know, a natural way to lose some of the weight that comes along with, with mm -hmm. pregnancy itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. Tell us more about the Human Milk Institute and, you know, how did that get started and, and um, how did you get involved specifically? Yeah. So the, the Human Milk Institute uh, really didn't start from scratch. It's nothing that we just grabbed out of thin air. UCSD has a long track record, track record over decades, really to work on human milk, whether it's research, application, clinical care, education. And uh, it really reached that critical mass where we said we have so many people here and so many different perspectives looking at human milk. 
uh, let's start an institute. Let's pitch this to leadership and say, we would like to have a full-on human milk institute that covers all aspects from molecular biology all the way over to global public health. So it's really a campus-wide uh, initiative that's not just health, it's not just health sciences. It's really campus-wide. It has a public health component, it has social sciences uh, component to it. Uh, we did a lot of work around uh, the pandemic to identify whether breastfeeding is safe if mom is uh, infected um, and informed actually uh, bodies like the WHO to change their recommendations. Mm -hmm. So all that happened here already before we had an official Human Milk Institute. And it was just absolute time to formalize that and harmonize all the different entities that we have already at UCSD and all march in the same direction with, uh, for collective impact, really. That's terrific. What are the key goals of the Institute? I think one is to educate. Uh, we are at the university, and uh, education plays a huge role here, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and believe it or not, uh, there is a uh, speciality for almost all organs in your body, for almost everything in your body. And we always joke about this. There is hepatology for the liver, there's cardiology for, uh, for the heart, mm -hmm. there's proctology, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to go further into that, <laughs> but there's no such thing as lactology. If you Google the term lactology, so the the science of the lactating mammary gland, it doesn't exist. So there's an entire speciality that isn't taught currently, that isn't mm -hmm. studied. And that's a major goal of HMI, to, to have a official track in lactology mm -hmm. that people can study here at UCSD and, and get their degree in. It really, it sounds like there's a lot of reasons why right now is sort of this pivotal moment in, in the history of Absolutely. understanding human yeah. breast milk. Yeah. And that's, of course, just the education component. Uh, we're trying in the, in the clinical care to make sure, especially our most vulnerable preterm babies, that they receive the benefits of human milk. That's where it matters. It's a matter of life and death, really. Mm -hmm. There is diseases that we know for sure that human milk protects babies, preterm infant babies, from these diseases, necrotizing enterocolitis being one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's absolutely clear that human milk is superior. What is it in human milk? How do we provide the right human milk at the right time to the right baby? Mm -hmm. Uh, is it mom's own milk? Is it donor human milk? And, and we have a, a very good uh, donor milk bank here in San Diego as well. It's part of the institute. Mm -hmm. So the clinical care is also very important. Mm -hmm. So it's education, clinical care, and then, of course, research. The many things that we don't know about human milk. How are milk components made in the mammary gland? Mammary gland biology is highly understudied. Mm -hmm. And then what do these molecules do? Uh, what do the cells do in human milk? What do antibodies exactly do? How do they benefit the baby? How do they benefit mom? And most importantly, really, what we just learned is, can we extrapolate that knowledge and leverage to build new therapeutics for people of all ages? Mm -hmm. For example, we have a project that shows that there are specific molecules in human milk that can protect potentially from cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis. So imagine you had components from human milk that we give babies every two, three hours, really. Mm -hmm. right? So we know they're safe. If they're safe for baby and we give it that, that often, we can take that same molecule, not human milk. We're not saying we want to feed human milk to, to adults now. Uh, that should be left for the baby. But we can make those compounds synthetically, give it to people that are at risk for heart attack or stroke, and potentially reduce those numbers as well. And that would be, that would be absolutely uh, fantastic. Yeah, that's really exciting. You touched on this a little bit. You know, when I work with patients in the office, they're often surprised to learn that the vaccines I'm recommending mm -hmm. are often actually for baby, um, you know, and, and now we've act added, you know, RSV mm -hmm. in addition to uh, the Tdap vaccine. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about how that works and, you know, what we know currently about mm -hmm. how best to protect the baby? That's a very active study here at UCSD. Actually, we have a few investigators in the Human Milk Institute that specifically look at RSV vaccine responses in mom and then how the vaccine that triggers the immune response and makes antibodies, so mom starts to make antibodies against RSV, mm -hmm. although she's not really exposed to it. But now those antibodies make it into milk and the baby gets protected through those antibodies. So mom is really the facilitator in that case to protect the baby in a way that the vaccine would not be able to do to the baby itself. And why can't brand new babies, you know, always get those vaccines? Why, why is that not as effective? Once they're not approved, uh, it's very <laughs> difficult to do those studies uh, in babies. So that's an additional layer of, of approval. Uh, but also the immune system is not responding in the same way. So uh, to take that in a more safer route to give it to mom, and then mom indirectly gives the, uh, the benefit to the baby, that's a, that's a very smart way of doing it. So what I'm hearing you say is that baby's immune system is literally depending on mom at that point to provide things that it hasn't yeah, yet matured to create. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just fascinating. Mm -hmm. 
What is some additional information you're hoping to learn from continuing to study human milk? It's really basic questions, uh, you know, not only what is in human milk, but when does it need to be delivered? Uh, are there some components that change over time? Uh, and if they do, does that, uh, is that a need that the baby receives those components at a certain time and development? And that would be very important, of course, because if we want to mimic that uh, in infant formula, you can't just grab the zero to six month uh, formula that is always standardized. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it does need to change over time. Mm -hmm. And um, I think on the maternal side, there's so much to learn still. Mm -hmm. uh, highly understudied, very unfortunate. Um, the fact that we are the first human milk institute in the world tells you everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. uh, I often get two responses there where people say, well, why do we need a human milk institute? Do we know everything about this already? I'm like, isn't that all clear? You know, human milk is very simple. We know everything about it. And the other response is, uh, what do you mean it's the first? Shouldn't we study this like all the time, like everywhere? Shouldn't every university study this somehow? Or a pediatrics department or OBGYN? Shouldn't we know more about this? Yeah. So um, I think there is a vastly understudied uh, area that, that we need to fill. Can you speak a little bit about the global health implications of human milk and if, if the Institute itself is doing any work uh, globally? Yeah, so, so the implications for, especially for low middle income countries are even more dire than, than it is for, for us here in the, in the US or in Central Europe. Uh, it is often a question of life and death. Uh, so you see that uh, if you don't provide human milk through breastfeeding, uh, you A, don't get the protective factors, so you don't get the antibodies, you don't get you know, all the benefits of human milk that protect you from infections. Uh, but also you very often make infant formula then with dirty water that is contaminated with certain pathogens. So you get a double hit there. Mm -hmm. You're getting the pathogens, but not the benefits from human milk. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see that in, in uh, low middle income countries that the pathogen burden is still so high, the infectious disease burden is so high, mm -hmm. we literally still lose more than 2,000 uh, babies and infants under the age of five uh, every single day to infectious diarrhea. Mm -hmm. So it's still one of the major health uh, burdens, and human milk has a huge benefit to, to protect infants from that. What do you think the future holds here for, for the future of the Institute mm -hmm. um, and for the use of human milk in general? I'm really hoping that, that the Institute will be, will be an entity that provides rigorous data, uh, information that really informs how we approach parents, how we approach healthcare providers, and how we approach this entire topic. It's very emotionally uh, driven mm -hmm. on, on many sides, many aspects. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we need to address as well. That's why social sciences being involved in this is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm really hoping that we can normalize breastfeeding in human milk. That's one of the aspects. Ideally already talk about it, uh, not just when the baby's out already, mm -hmm. but talk about it when you know, parents are pregnant uh, mm -hmm. during their OBGYN care. Talk about it in schools already. You know, this should be normalized. This should be something that high schoolers should know about. Why is it so important that, or what is human milk and why is it so important? Mm -hmm. So there's a huge education component also outside the university that I think we need to, need to address. So this normalization of breastfeeding, fully understanding the power of human milk and why it is this mystical but so magical uh, tissue still. And uh, really the, the potential to drive new therapeutics out of this that are potentially very cheap much cheaper than the biologicals that we're using right now, uh, and could be much safer than what we're using right now, because it is human-made, really, mm -hmm. and uh, is made for humans. So if it works for the baby, it might work for, for other age groups as well. So it's a huge span, really, you know, very unfocused it might sound, but that really shows you the, the, the opportunities, the many opportunities that we still have in this space. So much potential. Very much so, yeah. If people are interested and want to learn more about the Institute, mm -hmm. how can they do so? So we have an extensive website. It's uh, uh, hmi.ucsd.edu, <laughs> I believe. Yes, HMI, Human Milk Institute, hmi.ucsd.edu. Uh, so you find all the information there. Uh, every year we have a symposium. We started that this year. Uh, we're just announcing the next symposium tomorrow. So that will be in March uh, 2024, a two-day event. So if you're really interested in that and you would like to listen to some of the international experts in this topic that we bring in, it's going to be here in La Jolla, and we're planning on doing this uh, every year to really bring the experts from around the world to San Diego and have them tell us, you know, what have you learned in the last few years, what's new in the topic, what are the open questions still, and how can we all work together to, to move this field forward. That's really exciting. 
Well, I'm so grateful to you for your time here today and for your work um, to help improve the lives and the health of women and babies around the world. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you.